It's time for Tales of Terror, only on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. 63 Audio presents White Zombie, an audio drama adapted from the 1932 film originally starring Bella Lugosi, starring Christy Glick as Madame Murder with Mark Kalita, Kendra Murray, and Eileen Corpus. Adapted for audio and directed by Pete Lutz, The action takes place in Haiti in 1932. White Zombie. Looks like a burial. In the road? Driver, what is it? It's a funeral, mademoiselle. They are afraid of the men who steal dead bodies. So they dig the grave in the middle of the road where people pass all the time. Well, that's a cheerful introduction for you to our West Indies. Driver, there's a woman up ahead, alongside the road. Stop and ask her. Whoa! Pardon, madame, but do you know where is the house of Monsieur Beaumont? Madame, what are you doing? Look into my eyes, beautiful lady. Uh, no, I... I say, what on earth? (laughs) That is all. Farewell, mademoiselle. I shall see you again. Zombies! A la vite! Allez! Farewell. And for your lovely scarf, merci. (laughs) I wonder what that was all about. Her eyes. It felt like hands touching my throat. Why did you drive like that, you fool? We might have been killed. Worse than that, monsieur. We might have been caught. Caught? By whom? Those men we saw? They are not men, monsieur. They are dead bodies. Dead? We, oui, monsieur. Zombies. The living dead. Corpses taken from their graves who are made to work in sugar mills and fields at night. Look! Here they come! Look! Look! Oh, excuse me, please. Have have you got a match? Ah, did I frighten you? (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm ugly enough, I suppose. No, it wasn't you. Something happened back on the road there. We stopped to speak to a woman. Our driver saw some men coming over the hill, then told us that they weren't men at all. He said they were corpses. Corpses? <laughs> Surely you don't believe it, do you? No. Ah, uh, but I don't know. 
Haiti is full of nonsense and superstition. They are always mixed up with a lot of mysteries that will turn your hair gray. I've been a missionary here for over 30 years, and at times I don't know what to think. Come, let's go in the house. Oh, yes. Come, dear. Mr. Beaumontin? You are expected, Dr. Brunner. Yes, I've been sent for to marry someone. Maybe, hmm? (laughs) (laughs) How long is it that you've known Mr. Beaumont? Oh, only a few days. Madeline introduced him on the docks in Port-au-Prince. Ah, and you? I met him on the ship coming from New York. He was very kind during the voyage. Madeline and I planned to be married the moment she arrived. But Mr. Beaumont persuaded us to come here. And he promised to take me out of the bank at Port-au-Prince and send me to New York as his agent. Hmm, strange. Very strange. You are Silva still here? Did you want something? No, Dr. Brunner. I'll tell Mr. Beaumont you were here. Yeah. It's all right, isn't it, Doctor? Oh, I guess so. You see, I, I've only met Mr. Beaumont once or twice, but he never struck me like the man who would take the trouble to play fairy godfather to a young couple like you. Unless... Hold on a moment. Unless what, Doctor? Hmm, just missed him. Little butlers have big ears, eh? (laughs) So I suppose you both will think I am a meddling old fool, but you know I'd feel a good deal better if you'd clear out of this place after you're married and have nothing more to do with Mr. Beaumont. The young people have arrived, sir, and Dr. Brunner. They are waiting in the reception hall. Show them to the rooms and tell them I'm out. No, wait. Perhaps I'd better see them. It might look odd if I didn't. Very odd, sir, especially as Dr. Brunner is a trifle skeptical as to your motives, sir. Never mind my motives. Has that other person sent word yet? No, sir, not yet. She's 24 hours late. I wish you'd keep away from that woman, sir. What you are planning is dangerous. Don't you suppose I know that, Silver? You don't seem to realize what that girl downstairs means to me. I'd sacrifice everything I have in the world for her. Nothing matters if I can't have her. We never saw him again. (laughs) That was 20 years ago. Oh, well, I think, uh, I think you like Haiti. Most people that come here... Madeline, I'm delighted to see you. Neil, you're more than welcome. Thank you, sir. Doctor, it is very kind of you. I know what a busy woman you are. No, uh, not at all. There is a native family living out here that I have been trying to see for a long time. After this young couple are safely married, I will leave. But surely you will stay for dinner after the ceremony. No, 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 no. I must run along. That's a great pity. We have something very special prepared for this occasion. It was very good of you, Madeline, to humor the whim of a lonely man. There was so little time to prepare... I couldn't do half the things I wanted for you. You've done more than enough already, Mr. Beaumont, for a comparative stranger. You've made us so happy, giving Neil a position in the States. Neil? Yes. Yes, indeed. Oh, yes, of course. 
I'm sure Neil will make a very good agent, but you must be tired after your drive. You get some rest. Silver? Yes, Mr. Beaumont? Silver will show you to your rooms. This way, please. Is it Madame Legendre? Is she ready to see me? Very well. Let's go. Lead on. Delighted to see you again, Monsieur Beaumont. Will you shake hands? Hmm, well, please, sit. Quite a place you have here, Madame Legendre. <laughs> Quite the chamber of horrors, eh? These books, are they witchcraft? And what's in all these jars? <laughs> and that mounted head... Did you kill that beast yourself? <laughs> it's no mystery why the natives refer to you as Madame Murder. <laughs> I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, monsieur. I've been on a journey, seeking men for my meals. Men? They work faithfully, and they are not worried about long hours. You saw them just now operating the machinery. You... You can make good use of men like mine on your plantation. No, that's not what I want. Then perhaps we should talk about the young lady who came to your house this evening. You've seen her? When? On the road tonight. She lost this. Madeline Scarf. <laughs> There was a young man with her. They are to be married tonight. You waited too long to do anything. What do you want me to do? If she were to disappear for a month? What do you hope to gain by her disappearance? Everything. <laughs> do you think she will forget her lover in a month? Just give me a month. One little month. Not in a month. Not even a year. I have looked into her eyes. She is deep in love, but not with you. They're to be married within an hour. There must be a way. There is a way. The cost? The cost is heavy. You give me what I want and you may ask anything. Did you see my manservant when you came in? <clears throat> Let me tell you something in confidence. <gasps> no, not that. This vial contains your answer, my friend. Only a pinpoint, Monsieur Beaumont, in a glass of wine or perhaps a flower. Take it. The time is very brief. You must do your share if I am to help you. No. Take it, monsieur. Keep it. You may change your mind. Send me word when you use it. Au revoir, monsieur.
I'll find another way. There is no other way. to get ready for my wedding with that infernal drumming. They are driving away evil spirits. Close it! Close it! Mademoiselle, your wedding gown. It is beautiful. Mademoiselle. anything else in this whole world. Heaven or hell lies in this little moment for me. You could raise me up to paradise, or you could blast my world into nothing. I can make you the envy of every woman. I'd give my life to make you happy. Oh, listen to me, dear, before it's too late. Don't, please. Don't go into that room. We can be in Port-au-Prince in half an hour. There's a boat sailing at midnight. You've been so wonderful. Don't spoil everything now. Wait. One last gift, before I lose you forever. Here, please, I prepared this rose just for you. Thank you. Oh, it smells heavenly. I'll add it to my wedding bouquet. Let's go in. We are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. While the wedding occurs inside, I have a little ceremony to perform out here. <coughs> ah, Vulture, my old friend, so good to see you. Yes, you are my good own in this special evening. See what I do? I take this candle from the lamp, so. <laughs> I wrap this scarf which was the young woman's, around the base of the candle. Now, with my knife, I carve the shape of a special lady. Do you like it, my friend? I hope you're enjoying the wedding supper I had prepared for you. This is the night of nights. A toast to the bride, to beauty's queen. Gladly, my lord. Leave but a kiss within the glass. Fair gypsy, take my glass and read my fortune. What do you see in the glass? I see happiness. I see love far more than you can bear. Is that all? No. I see. I see. (gasps) What is it? (laughs) 
I see death. Death. <gasps> Madeline. Madeline, what's wrong? Madeline, my dear, please. And now, my friend, I hold the carved figure over the flame of this other candle. And as it melts... Madeline! Madeline! Can't we do something? Please! Please! Madeline! Not my wife! My wife! I can't feel a pulse. Silver, send someone to fetch the doctor. Oh, Neil, my poor fellow, I hope it's not too late. of our Lord and Savior, and the love of God and the fellowship of his angels be with us evermore. Amen. Curse this darkness. Why must we sneak our way through the cemetery without a torch? My dear Beaumont, our mission is one of secrecy. Do you wish the eyes of the village upon us? Yes, I suppose you're right. <sighs> At least that blasted husband of hers won't be interfering. No? How can you be so certain? My man Silver followed Neil to a tavern, watched him as he drank himself silly. Grief causes men to do terrible things. Yes. Apparently the blighter started screaming Madeline's name, clutching at shadows on the wall, and then ran out into the night. Silver told me the look on Neil's face was... <laughs> look! Zombies blocking the entrance to Madeline's tomb! Yes. They are my servants. Did you think we could do it alone? In their lifetime, they were my enemies. Here, I shall introduce you. Leto, the witch doctor, once my master. Secrets I tortured out of him. Von Gelder, a schwein, swollen with riches. He fought against my spells until the last. In him yet, I have a struggle, a fight. His Excellence, Richard, once Minister of the Interior. Scarpia, brigand chief. Marquis, captain of the gendarmerie. And this? This is Chauvin, the high executioner who almost executed me. I took them just as we will take this one in her tomb. But what if they regain their souls? They would tear me to pieces. But that, my friend, shall never be. Go in now. Bring the casket out. Set it down here. Remove the upper panel. Ah. Oh, <gasps> Madeline. Wait, touch a knot. Shh. 
Do you hear? Yes, poor Blighter's mad with grief. What'll we do? You! Remove the casket to Castle Legendre. Hurry! You and I must hurry ahead of my servants. The young man must not catch us here. Yes, let's go. Madeline. Oh, Madeline. I'm here, darling. I'm here. She's gone. She's gone. Where did she go? And that's why I've come to see you, Dr. Bruner. Madeline's casket? Her body? They couldn't have just... disappeared? You're the only person that I can trust. Well, my boy, there are two explanations that strike me. Either the body was stolen by members of a death cult that use human bones in their ceremonies, or else... Or else what? She's not dead. Not dead? Are you mad? I saw her die. The doctor signed the certificate. I saw them bury her. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not mad. But I've lived in this island for a good many years, and I've seen things with my eyes that made me think I was crazy. There are superstitions in Haiti that the natives brought here from Africa. Some of them can be traced back as far as ancient Egypt and beyond that yet. In the countries that was old when Egypt was young. Yes, but what has that to do with Madeline? I kissed her as she lay there in the coffin, and her lips were cold. Let me explain. Now, just a minute, I'll explain. Wherever there is a superstition, you will find there is also a practice. Now, do you remember what your driver told you the night that he took you to Beaumont's house? Oh, About those horrible creatures we saw. Yeah. He said they were corpses, taken from their graves. Yeah. That's the superstition. Now, for the practice. The ghouls that steal the dead corpses from their graves are supposed to put them there in the first place. Do you mean that Madeline was murdered so that somebody could steal her dead body? Ah, nonsense. No, no, not her dead, not her, her body. Yes, but not her dead body. That is what I meant. Well, surely you don't think she's alive in the hands of the natives. Oh, no. Better dead than that. Excuse me, please. Have you got a match? Uh, yes. Here. Danke. (laughs) A terrible habit, yeah? But I picked up such a habit from my papa. This was his pipe. (laughs) You don't believe that, do you? Believe? Oh, yeah. About the living dead. Say, there's been lots of people that's been pronounced dead, that came alive again and lived for years. Now, 
if nature can play pranks like that, why isn't it possible to play pranks with nature? Oh, I don't know. Your driver believed he saw dead men walking. He didn't. What he saw the man alive in everything but this, the head and this, the heart. This man, what they call zombies, are men who live and breathe, yet are not aware of their physical selves, their mental selves. These zombies, they would walk the earth aimlessly, if not for their keeper, their creator, their master. You see? Oh, the whole thing has me confused. I just can't understand it. Oh, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I've been trying for years to get to the bottom of these things, to separate what you call fact from fiction. Let me see. How can I explain this another way? Ah, yeah, up here on this shelf is the very sink. The law. The law of Haiti acknowledges the possibility of being buried alive. Here it is. The, in the penal code. I'll read it for you. It's in French. Do you speak French? No. Hmm. Excuse me, please. Have you got a match? Look, right here on the desk. Here's one. Oh, thank you. I didn't see it there. I'll, I'll translate it for you, if you could spare me. Article... Article 249. The use... The use of drugs... or other practices which produce lethargic coma or lifeless sleep shall be considered attempted murder. Yes. Attempted. Yes, I see. Yeah, all right now. Wait. If the person has been buried alive, the act should be considered murder. No matter what result follows. Beaumont, say... You said that you couldn't understand why he was so interested in us. Do you think he did this? No, no. I think his natives would. Natives would be right, of course. If you want to, we could go to Beaumont's house first. If I could get my hand on the devil that's responsible for this, I'll make her such an example that... Every witch doctor in Haiti would be shaking in his sandals. But we can't do this alone. Can't the authorities help? The authorities? Neil, my boy, you don't know this island. The native authorities are afraid to meddle. I am not. So, I've got friends amongst the natives. They'll tell me things that no gendarme could ever get out of you. Hm. Because I am a preacher, they think I am a magician. Before we get through with this thing, we may uncover sins that even the devil would be ashamed of. Oh, these witch doctors. Hm. Hm. Excuse me, have you got a match?
Madeline, your playing is lovely. <sighs> oh, why are we wasting time in Legendre's castle? You and I should be on our way to Port-au-Prince. Here, my love, this is for you. See? It's a necklace of diamonds. Let me see it around your neck. There. <sighs> Foolish things. They can't bring back the light to those eyes. I was mad to do this, but if you had smiled on me, I, I'd have done anything for you. Given you anything. I thought that beauty alone would satisfy. But the soul is gone. I can't bear those empty, staring eyes. Oh, forgive me, Madeline. Forgive me. I can't bear it any longer. I must take you back. <laughs> back to the grave, monsieur? No. You must put the life back into her eyes and bring laughter to her lips. She must be cheerful and happy again. You paint a charming picture, monsieur. One that I should like to see myself. You must bring her back. Aren't you a trifle afraid, monsieur? How do you suppose these eyes will regard you when the brain is able to understand? Leave us now, my dear. Better to see hatred in them than that dreadful emptiness. Perhaps you're right. It would be a pity to destroy such a lovely flower. Let's drink to the future of this flower. A glass of wine. Monsieur? Silver, bring wine. We have a toast to drink. Ah, let me have them. For you, my friend. Thank you. To the future, monsieur. Madame, why do you not drink? Only a pinpoint, monsieur. In a flower, or perhaps a glass of wine. You devil! What are you trying to do to me? <laughs> I have other plans for Mamselle, and I am afraid you might not agree. <laughs> I have taken a fancy to you both, monsieur. Silver! Silver! Hey! Monsieur Beaumont! I cannot move! Her eyes! I am rooted to the spot! Come to me! Come, my slaves! Go! Don't! Don't! Where are they taking him? The future, monsieur. <laughs> the vulture, you... No, not that, not that. Madame Murder. Doctor? Is the castle much farther? I'm sorry, Neil. I know you're not feeling well. I think we should reach the shoreline by nightfall. Then we'll pitch camp. Why did we spend so much time with that old gentleman? Old gentleman? Ah, you mean the local witch doctor. I told you his name is Pierre. 
I've known him for years. Bright old fellow. He's famous for being the only person who ever came back alive from the castle Legendre. He told me that the natives call it and the mountain it stands on, the land of the living dead. I thought I heard him talking about evil spirits. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, he did. He also warned us to turn back. But you and I, we've come too far to turn back now, eh? <laughs> now you just sit on your donkey and follow me. And don't strain yourself with talking, my boy. Pierre gave me some good advice. And we'll come out of this alive. And with Madeline in the bargain. Well, we made it to the base of the mountain, eh? I think we did fine. We have sturdy lean to to keep out the sun and weather and plenty of food. And... Ah! Speaking of water, here, Neil, take a drink from the canteen, hmm? I'll help you. He's nearly delirious, poor boy. But he drinks. <coughs> ah, vulture! Let's see how you like this, eh? <coughs> Just as old Pierre said, a cloud of vultures always hovers over the house of the living dead. Madeline? Madeline? Doctor, is she up there? In the castle? No. Oh, I must go and see her. Oh, no. No, no, no. Neil, my boy, please. Please lie down and rest. Please. You'll feel stronger in the morning. You rest. Let me go up and see what I can do. Why is she so restless tonight? She keeps wandering out to the balcony. Perhaps she remembers something. <laughs> they never remember anything when they are like that. No? Because she's cut off. She's coming back in. It's time to get her ready for dinner. Is there airbrush? Sit down, mademoiselle. Madeline, I know you're up there. I'll find you. What are you waiting for? Brush her hair. No, I can't. I can't touch her. You must. It's your turn. <laughs> Let's run away. No, no, I can't stand it. I'm going to run away. She will find you and back you like her. Madeline. Madeline. <laughs> Can you still hear me, Monsieur Beaumont? It is unfortunate you are no longer able to speak. I should be interested to hear you describe your symptoms. You see, you are the first man to know what is happening. None of the others did. 
Ah, what is this? You reach out your hand to me. Be careful of my blade as I carve the wax figure. <laughs> you refused to shake hands once. I remember. Well, well, we understand each other better now. I've got to find Madeline! Is that the young man? Eh? He has collapsed at the top of the staircase. <laughs> this will be the perfect irony, Monsieur Belmont. Don't you think? Madeline, come to me. Madeline, Madeline come, come to, to me. me. Madeline, come, come to me. me. Use the blade on the young man, man who sleeps up there. Hmm. Madeline, get away from the edge! Ah! Oh, I've got you. There. Oh, my darling. Come over here and sit down. Madeline, I found you. I thought you were dead. But look, you're alive. <laughs> alive! What's the matter? Don't you know me? I'm Neil, your husband. Oh, my darling. What have they done to you? I saw you yesterday on the road. Who are you? And what are they? To you, my friend, they are the dangers of death. Blast you! Why don't you fall? Dr. Bruner! They're forcing me toward the edge of the cliff! Ah, Legendra! I've got you now, you devil! Oh. Neil! Come! Zombies! This way! Ah! How come it was easy to escape them? What happened to the woman? I bopped her on the bean! She's out cold! Look! 
The zombies! Yeah, without Madame Legendre's mind controlling them, they follow each other off the cliff into the sea! <laughs> Neil? I... I... No... You are, you are mine. 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 Only, only mine. mine. Madeline, don't you know me, dear? It's Neil! I could swear for a moment she recognized you. <laughs> Come on! Don't let her get away! Stay back. This will stop you. Neil, stop! It's poison gas! Madam. Come, Come to me. You are, you are mine. mine. Come, Come to me. Mmm. Mmm. Neil, look! It's Beaumont. He's. Uh, he's. <coughs> Bumba? What are you doing? No! Let me go! Madeline, my darling. Neil, I... I dreamed. Oh, my sweet. Let me kiss you. Excuse me, please. Hey? What is it, Doctor? Excuse me, have you got a match? <laughs> <laughs> That was Pete Lutz's adaptation of the 1932 film White Zombie, created especially for Transcontinental Terror 2020. The story and dialogue were by Garnett Weston, and the screenplay was by Frank Lawrence and Laura May. It was adapted for audio and directed by Pete Lutz. Our cast consisted of the following players. Christy Glick as Madame Murder Legendre, Kendra Murray as Madeline, Eileen Corpus as Dr. Bruner, Phil Boyd Studd as Beaumont and the carriage driver, Mark Kalita as Neil, Chuck Wilson as Silver, Ebony Rose and Dawn Robertson as the maids, and Jackie Ayers as the vulture. Zombie voices were provided by Kyle Thomas, John Bell, Jack Ward, and Arno Eggsleft. Music was by Dr. Ross Bernhardt, Kevin McLeod, Claude Debussy, and Reinhardt Glier. This is CK Standard Speaking, White Zombie was a 63 audio production, mixed and mastered in Corpus Christi, Texas. 63 Audio This is Mutual. We pop into the village shop. Pal had suggested we extend the walk to the other side of Renslow to look at the farmhouse he mentioned. I agree on condition that we grab some drinks and snacks. The shop we find ourselves in has the same tone and quality as the hotel. Someone must have made a valiant effort to create homespun, handcrafted Victorian domestic contentment, or at least what passed for that in the 1970s. And since then, it's lain untouched, including some of the stock for sale, which now looks like a collection of pub ornaments. Framed embroidery and woodwork thick with off-white gloss. A whole wall of second-hand VHS tapes for sale, neatly crammed onto stripped pine bookshelves. 
everything in the shop window looks like a thing that somebody once had lost. From out the back comes a thin-lipped woman in her 60s who looks at us with calm intensity. Good morning. Good morning to you. Hi. Uh, we'll take these drinks, please, and uh, perhaps something to eat for the walk? Yes, we've got everything you see here, and there's some more in the cabinet over there. Ah, what shall I have? Uh, what's the most local thing you've got? Local? Yeah, a uh, local delicacy, low food miles. Well, it's all fairly local. These are all from the Woodrow Bakery in the next village. Mrs Clindenny makes the flapjacks. They're usually all right. What are and... these? Ah, yes. Well, those are, yes, very local. In fact, I don't think anywhere else sells them. They don't come in all the time. What have they got in them? It's an unusual colour, isn't it? It's the seaweed gives it that colour. Makes the cake a little bit salty, too. But that's how we like them. We'll take two, please. Of course. That's four pounds and forty pence in all. What are they called? We call them dawn gleanings. You go down to the beach just before dawn. That's when you have a chance of finding them. They're hard to see, though. You might mistake one for a big pebble or a shell. So you have to know what you're looking for. But if they want you to find them, you'll come back with a basket full of dawn gleanings. You should always leave something behind as payment. Always. A small piece of meat is good. It doesn't matter if it's grisly. It's a token of respect more than anything for those who made them. Who? Who makes them? Those who have passed. Some people in the village think that's just a story, so careful who you go telling it to. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We take a long walk that afternoon, across the fields and footpaths to a farmhouse. Three years ago, it had been the scene of a murder. It was all over the papers at the time, but I was deep in my second-year dissertation and paying very little attention to the news. From what I did hear, it sounded to me like a sordid little story, with one-dimensional characters and no moral at the end. I agree with you. It is bland. It is tragic. And it is banal, but only on the surface. As I munch on my dawn gleanings, which are a bit salty and seaweedy, Maletsky is selling it to me, as if it's a classic opera he cries at every time. There are some minor details about the murder which have no explanation. They seem to me to be part of the mystery of the landscape through which we walk. So, George Mallon living on his own in a remote farmhouse, shoots a burglar dead. Yes. George Malham is known to be strongly xenophobic and the burglar happens to be Romany. Yes. George Malham has a history of mental illness, which he is not taking medication for, and a pump-action shotgun, which he does not have a licence for. This is all correct. But, of course, there are other ways of telling the story. 